So I'm gonna tell you a quick story and I'm gonna take you back in time all the way back to two years ago when I was a completely different person. The person you see in this picture was me from two years ago. This person was a great person, but he also let a lot of things slide. This person also tolerated a lot of disrespect. This person did not know when to say no. I was too nice, and for a short amount of time, I was even labeled as a pushover. You see, back then, I didn't know what to accept or what not to accept into my life. In fact, I really didn't know a lot about myself, which, by the way, as a man, that's a huge red flag because that automatically makes you indecisive. That poured into so many areas of my life, and it hurt my confidence in ways that I can't even describe. All because I thought, the more I go through and the more that I can tolerate, that means the thicker my skin is, which means that's how tougher I was, right? I was wrong. What's up, man? My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so that you can better yourself every single day and live life on your own terms. On this channel, I talk about saving money, getting out of debt, increasing your income, and various personal growth topics, and I bring them all the way back to my personal experiences to serve as a motivation to you. Let's get into the video. So even though I was very tough when it came to tolerating other people's BS and just BS in general, I was not tough when it came to addressing issues head on. By that I mean I avoided conflict, which ironically followed me everywhere I went. And that means tough conversations I needed to have with people were avoided. That means when I disagreed with somebody, instead of speaking up, I avoided it. That means when somebody disrespected me, instead of checking them on their disrespect, I avoided it. That was me two years ago. The me from two years ago used to play victim. The me from two years ago used to think that life wasn't fair. Woe is me. What did I do to deserve this? I did all that instead of looking at what I could do to change my situation, which I'll get to in a minute. And back then, I didn't realize that all it took was to face conflict head on instead of avoiding it that would yield the changes that I was wanting to see in my life. That meant I had to take action. That's when I learned that sometimes conflict is necessary to get to the next step of your life. And I got that quote directly from a book called Strength Finders, and I'll link it in the description if you wanna read it. But, but when I read that passage, it made me think about my past and my then present circumstances and issues that I was dealing with in life. And it really made me ask myself, what are you fighting for? And that brought back a memory of me having to stand up to both of my parents when I was still in high school. They wanted me to go to a college closer to home instead of going to the college that I wanted to go to, which was three hours away. If you don't know what that college is, that's East Carolina University. And my parents wanted me close to home so bad that they attempted to force me to go to the school that was closer to home. <laughs> they probably watching this video right now. Hi mom, hi dad. Yeah, I'm calling you out, but it came down to this. I said, uh, so who's paying for my schooling? And they were both like, they were both like, you, you're paying for it. What do you mean? Yeah, you're paying for it, not us. We're not paying for it. I was like, exactly. So I stay where I go to school. And that was that, bro. So when I got to thinking about my then current situation, which at that time was just work, I asked myself why I didn't bring that same energy, you know, that same resistance when I came across something that I didn't like at work. And there was a lot of BS that happened at work, bro. You see, you can have the most resilience in the world. You can have more drive than anybody around you. You can have more ambition than anybody around you. But if you lack the skill of addressing things that you straight up refuse to tolerate, you will be seen as weak and by the wrong people. And I'm talking about the people who literally seem like they were put on this earth just to test you. Every day at work, my patience was tested with condescending talk of, oh, you're young, you're just a baby. What makes you think you can handle all this responsibility? You're not nothing. Listen, listen, son, listen, dear. You're young, you're learning, it's okay. See, that right there would test anybody's patience. Every day at work, my tolerance for disrespect and my ability to keep my cool despite me wanting to go off on everybody was tested. Bro, when your boss is the type to cuss you out just for a slight, simple mistake, you've got a problem. And, and the reason this is the problem is because you're very limited in terms of what you can actually do about the fact that your boss just cussed you out. Or at least that's what I thought at the time because that was just how I felt. When your peer is yelling at you at the end of your shift, beginning of their shift, just because one thing is out of place, 
Even though you've been by yourself and you've been working every single day doing everything you could to keep the whole department together by yourself without any assistance from anyone, you've got a problem. When you're in the middle of training a new manager for your department and one of your direct reports blatantly disrespects you right in front of them, you've got a problem. I'll tell you about what I did about all of that later. Every day at work, my confidence was tested. Whenever I had to report out on a quality issue or an incident or something that was going on at that time, I was always met with, are you sure? That doesn't sound right. Do you really know what's going on? That doesn't sound like that happened. Despite the fact that I was everywhere and I saw all of these things happen with my own eyes, and I was even the one who was directly involved with resolving each issue that I brought up. I'm not even gonna lie, man. Being asked those same questions every single day and just feeling like there was a bunch of doubt in me just because I was young, that really did scar my confidence because I just felt like I wasn't trusted or believed with any type of information I gave. But one day I got tired of all those tests and something within me just said, man, test them back. So I did. One day I was explaining yet another quality issue and then my boss in front of 20 freaking people was like, are you sure that happened? I don't believe that. Did you check this? Did you check that? Ah, uh, that doesn't sound right. Are you sure? And then I fired back. I was like, what, you don't believe me? In front of 20 freaking people. I'm going to show you the same energy you're showing me. And, you know, he froze. He didn't know what to say. He was like, no, no, I, I believe you. Okay. That's what I thought. That was when a light bulb went off in my head that said, people are always going to test you. Test them back. Reassert yourself and show them who you are. Show them that not only are you confident enough to stay calm under pressure, but no, you're also confident enough to check them on the fact that they ever doubted you. Tell me that's not cold. You see, when I started living on my own and working my very first full-time job, that was the very moment that my self-confidence, the very structure that my self-confidence was built on was tested to see just how strong it was. And I found out that my foundation was weak because my self-confidence was built on my own accomplishments, which at the time were high grades in school, making college drumline, bench pressing twice my body weight, and being good at Microsoft Excel. Yeah, that's pretty much it. You see, none of those accomplishments really matter in the real world. So when I based all of my self-confidence off of just my accomplishments alone, I was basically just telling myself, hey, your self-worth is within everything you accomplish in life. Bro, when I did that, sure, I was on top of the world at first. That is until I didn't have any accomplishments within the real world. And that put me in a very, very dark spot. Just imagine someone who isn't used to failing like at all. I mean, high marks on everything, punctuality, energy, drive, intelligence, attention to detail, everything. And then imagine just falling flat on your face when it comes to the very thing that you worked so hard to get, which in my case was my job. And look, I go over this in way more detail in my other videos about my job. You can catch them up here or down here after you watch this video. But I was thrown in a sink or swim situation and man, I sunk like to the bottom of the river with my hands tied and cinder blocks tied to my feet. And the river current was just throwing me all around with no chances of me coming up for air ever. Look, I know that sounds really dark and graphic, but that is straight up how I felt. And it ruined every bit of confidence that I built throughout the years, the short 21 years of my life at that time. Sure, I could endure the pain of what I was going through. I could, I could deal with deaths at work, deaths in the family, long hours at work, no days off. I could deal with missing weddings. I could deal with missing funerals. I could deal with the breakup. I could deal with being the youngest leader in the entire plant and because of that dealing with disrespect from everyone. But just because I could deal with all that and be still standing did not mean that I had thick skin. It did not mean that my skin was anywhere near as thick as it should have been. Because when it came to self-confidence, control, and facing issues head on, I was weak. That's when I learned what you get in life is what you tolerate. And what you tolerate becomes what you expect. So every day I woke up to go to work, 
I expected some BS to happen. I expected one of my direct reports to tell me that they weren't gonna do something that I directly told them to do. I expected my boss to tell me I have to work yet another week in a row without any day off in sight. I expected someone to blatantly tell somebody that I was young and didn't know what I was doing right in front of me every day. And I expected these things because I tolerated these things on a daily basis. And the ironic thing is I thought I was going through something the whole time, but in reality, they kept occurring because I kept allowing them to happen. I didn't stand up for myself. Yeah, me being a tough guy, I'm telling myself, yeah, stuff like this is Bill's character. Yeah, no one my age could deal with this. I'm, I'm tough, man. I got that thick skin. I'm strong. You see what I have to deal with? And I'm still standing and I'm still here. Please. Let's go. But tolerating things that decrease value in your life and takes away the joy that you get from life and tolerating things that stop you from doing the very things that you want to do in your life and then telling yourself that you have thick skin for being able to tolerate such mess is literally the equivalent of you being in a boxing ring and the other guy is just punching the mess out of you, punch after punch after punch, and you just not blocking them, not moving out of the way. You're just, hoo, hoo. <sighs> and then looking at them and saying, I'm tougher than you, but you're still taking the punches though. But you still got a black eye though. But you still got a broken jaw, missing teeth though. Sure, you can take more punches to the face than the other guy, but if you would've just blocked his hit and then hit him and he fell down, guess what? You wouldn't have gotten hit in the first place, bro. And that was me. I wasn't getting out of the way. I wasn't blocking. I was just taking every hit to the face that I could possibly take. And I just smiled saying, I'm tougher than you. I have thicker skin than you. Wrong. That is stupid. Do not think like that. Do not do like that. Do not be the me from two years ago. Just don't. And so, and so the moment that I started hitting back, figuratively of course, people started to see that I took myself seriously and that I had some self-respect about myself, which in turn made them take me seriously and it made them respect me. And they knew, disrespect me when I'm with someone, I'll check you on it. Disrespect me when I'm alone, I'll put you in your place. Waste my time? I'll make sure it never happens again. Pull some BS, lie to me, belittle me. I'll let you know about it without any regard or hesitation or remorse for how you may feel about what I have to say. And you will know, and I will make it very clear to you that disrespect will not be tolerated under any circumstances and it better not happen again. That's the sound of a self-respecting man who sees himself is a high valued person. That's a man who takes himself seriously and actually has a vision for his life. That's a man who is not afraid to face conflict and let people know what is on his mind without being belligerent. That's how I am now after learning these harsh lessons. You see, before that, I was just living life on autopilot, allowing life to happen to me instead of life happening around me. And the moment that I woke up to that fact, everything around me changed. And I learned that every test that I ever had at work was more spiritual than anything because these tests are what made me evolve as a man to give you very valuable content that you're watching right now. I failed those tests at first. And the byproduct of failing those tests were anxiety, self-doubt, uncertainty, pain, self-pity, misery, and stress. And you know, I had to fight those internal battles on my own and literally nobody that I knew knew that I was even facing those issues. So, so that's what was going on on the inside, but on the outside I was, you know, straight face, Mr. Tough Guy, nothing bothers me. You know what I mean? That is not the way, bro. That's not cold. So the moral of the story is, the moment that I understood that I needed to stand up for myself and face some conflict head to head, that was the moment that the trajectory of my life changed. The world is cold, bro. What are you gonna do about it? That's the video for today, man. Thank you so much for watching this video. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so that you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Stay cold.